Okay, sorry about that uh, minor interruption. Um, so we're just continuing on here. We're going to, in column A, I click the column A tab, and down here we have the call name field. This field will be the name of the column that is shown on the exploration report. This will be what the title of that column is on the report. So we're going to call this RSI by. And um, now we, I know that we are going to use seven periods in the uh, RSI function. So and the buy signal is just the RSI crossing above 30 the level of 30 so I'm just going to use a cross function and an RSI function I'm just going to enter this formula directly in so do cross RSI what I'm going to do is rather than type it in directly we're going to go to the system tester and just uh, get the formula from there so we'll just click OK on that. Since we've named it, it's still going to be there. So we'll go to the system tester. And we'll click edit. And the formula is here in our buy order. So I'm just going to copy that, highlight it, and then press Control C. Or I could right click and choose copy. And we'll go back to the Explorer, click Edit, then I'm going to right click and choose Paste. Now the Explorer is not going to recognize this OPT1 input, uh, that's only valid in the system tester, but uh, we remember from the report that we're going to plug the value of 7 in there, so I'm just going to take that out and put 7. And we'll just kind of clean this up a little bit. We'll get the spaces out. So there's our RSI buy signal for column A. Now for column B, we're going to do an RSI cell. So I'm just going to go in there and type RSI cell. And again, we'll go back to the system tester. Edit. And the cell order is similar. It's just a <clears throat> parameter of the constant of 70 in the first part of the cross function, and then the RSI in the second part, and we'll copy that. Come back over to the Explorer, click Edit, and then we're just going to paste that in. And again, we'll change that to 7. And there we have our RSI cell formula. Now, um, if we were to run this now, we would not have any filtering. The, re the exploration report would show a value of 1 or 0 in column A or B. Anything that has a 1 in, in column A would be an RSI buy signal. Anything in column B would be an RSI 7 cell signal. But we'd like to show more information in the exploration report. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to column C here and we're just going to enter the the closing price. We want to see the closing price there. And I could type the word close or I could just use the letter C. In column D, we want to show an average of volume. We could show, we could just type the letter V for volume, or we could type out the word volume. 
and we'll just uh, enter that in the column name here, volume. In column A, we want to show the value of the RSI. So we'll type RSI, and I'm just going to put 7 in there so that we know that it's a, a 7 period RSI. So now in columns C, D, and E on the report, it's going to show us the closing price, the volume, and the value of the seven period RSI. Now, if, if we want to filter out a buy or sell signal, I'm just going to come over to the filter column here and I'm going to use a column reference and we're, we're going to cover that a little bit later on but uh, the column reference I'm going to use is reference for column A and it's just C-O-L-A and I'm going to type OR and then I'm going to use a column reference for column B which would be C-O-L-B and that's basically it. Um, I completed creating this exploration Now we're going to go ahead and run this and uh, we'll see what kind of results we get. So I've got that highlighted. It's on the list now. I'm going to click Next. We've got the S&P 500 stocks uh, already selected here so we'll go ahead and hit Next and uh, we'll start the exploration. As you can see from the results there, the uh, we are getting some uh, some hits. Where our percent rejected is about 84. Um, so we'll just let that continue on here for another moment or so. Okay, since we know that we've got quite a few results, um, we're, we're just going to go ahead and cancel the exploration and it will still show us what's done so far. Okay, so I'm going to hit reports and uh, there we have our results. And um, I'm just kind of scroll up and down and looks like we have all cell signals. Now um, if we had a mix of both, some buy and some sell, then we could sort the list on RSI buy or RSI sell and that would sort either ascending or descending those signals. And we could also sort these other columns. So let's say we want to support, excuse me, let's say that we want to sort by the close. So I'll just click close and then I can see from lowest to highest the closes. If I want to see from highest to lowest I can click it again. Do the same thing with volume. We can see uh, which ones are showing the highest and lowest volume and then also the same with the RSI okay now um, we have a, a pretty wide range of prices here. Um, we have a couple that are trading under $10. And then we have several that are trading above $100. Now let's just suppose that uh, 
we don't want to trade securities under 10 and over 100. So what we can do is we can go back into the Explorer and we can refine the filtering. So I'm just going to close out of the report there. Go back into the Explorer. And then we'll uh, select uh, our, our, the exploration we've been working with is already selected. So I'm just going to click Edit. And then I'm going to come over here to the Close column. I'm actually going to come to the filter column and uh, we have our call A and call B column references in here and I'm, and I'm going to add a price filter. Okay now before I do that I need to just uh, place these in parentheses so that they will calculate correctly and I've done that and I'm going to go ahead and just type the word and and then C for close I'm going to say greater than 10 And then another AND, C for close, less than 100. And that is going to filter out securities that trade under $10 and over $100. So we'll click OK on that. And then we'll go ahead and just uh, run this exploration again, get some results. Okay, as you can see, this time around we're getting fewer results. Uh, our percent rejected is about 93%. We'll just go ahead and cancel it and get the report. Okay, there we go. And uh, again, we have all cell signals, and uh, but you can see now that our closes are all between ten dollars and a hundred dollars. And then we can sort the list again to see the highest and the lowest. Okay, so far we've uh, created an exploration from a system test. Um, 
And if you can, of course, do the, a similar thing from an expert advisor. If you have an expert that uh, is giving you good results on a particular stock or a particular security, and you want to uh, expand that to other securities, then um, you can copy the, re the, the formulas from the expert editor into a new exploration. We'll just take a quick look at uh, an expert. So I'll go into the expert advisor and we'll just go to the Equus Relative Strength Index. I'm going to click Edit. I'm going to go to uh, my, the, the Symbols tab here. This is what shows the buy and sell arrows on a chart. So rising above 30 would be the buy signal. So I'm just going to edit that. And then I could just copy and paste that into an exploration editor uh, similar to what we did with the system tester. Okay, the next uh, topic we're going to discuss is the loaded records in an exploration. Um, we'll just uh, bring up the explorer here. Now, when I select an exploration, and then I click Next, and then I choose the securities and click Next. Then I come to the data loading section. And there's two settings here. There's load minimum records and records to load, which can obviously be manually entered or selected from the the uh, the rotator arrows. We're just going to keep that at 1000. It's important to understand what uh, effect this has on your explorations. Um, When Metastock is first installed, the, the, the load setting is by default set to load minimum records. Um, some explorations will work just fine with that, um, but a number of explorations need to have it set to the other option, which is the records to load setting where you can enter a number of records to load. And we just got a few points here um, to kind of cover what uh, what the loaded records are are, are impacting. Um, the first point here is that um, if you have any kind of a um, calculation in the Explorer that is sensitive to the number of periods, uh, there's a number of indicators that are that that. Uh, that are sensitive to the number of periods, um, exponential moving averages. Directional move. The RSI is slightly sensitive to the number of records. So if you if you if you're looking at charts and loading a certain number of records on a chart, or you have an expert attached to a chart that is also basing its calculations on a particular number of records, then if you go into the Explorer and run an exploration, and if the data loading is set to load minimum, then you're not going to get consistent results. 
you want the number of records loaded in the Explorer to match what you're loading on charts, especially if you're using those types of indicators. Um, the second uh, item we have here is that uh, a lot of formula functions don't work properly when the the data loading is set to load minimum records. Um, specifically, the all of the since functions, bar since, highest since, lowest since. If you're not familiar with those, um, the these basically look for a condition or a highest or a lowest since a particular point in time. And we'd be happy to uh, answer questions about those by email. But uh, it's important to understand that those do not work well or do not work properly when the data loading is set to minimum. Also some indicator functions in formulas don't work properly when the load options are set to minimum. A couple of examples of those are uh, the parabolic R, uh, S, parab parabolic SAR, and also candlestick functions. Um, We shall. Okay, we're just going to kind of show you an example of the different, uh, how the different number of loaded periods can affect calculations with certain indicators. So we're just going to open a chart, and we've got uh, Citigroup selected there, so we'll just go ahead and use that. Now this is set to load default, which I believe is 1,250 records. So we're just going to go ahead and open the chart. Oh, uh, excuse me, let me bring the Metastock screen back over here so you can see that. So we have a uh, city group here. I'm just going to move this up here. And we have here the parabolic SAR. And you can see the we're actually going to remove that. And we'll just do a, an exponential moving average. We're going to do 50 time periods in that. Let's go ahead and plot that. We'll merge it with the scale on the right. Okay, I'm just going to zoom the chart in so that we can see that better. Here we have our last candlestick or our last period of data. And then right here we have our 50 period exponential moving average. This gives us a value of 50.1246. Okay. What I'm going to do is drop a horizontal line on the chart so we can kind of see where that value of the 50 period exponential moving average is. You can see that it's it's just kind of hugging the highs of these three periods. Kind of looks like a resistance line there at that particular point in time.
Okay, I'm just going to come down here to the x-axis. I right-clicked on the x-axis and now I'm choosing x-axis properties. And we can see that our, our loaded period is about five years, about 1,250 records. So we're just going to reduce that to, instead of five years, to just down to just a few months. So we'll say, let's just kind of change this here to, we'll change this to March of this year. Click OK on that. Now you can see that the moving average value is, it's not a whole lot different, but it is different. It was matching this trend line here, but now right here at the bottom, it's just, a, it's gone up above it just a little bit. And it's giving us a different value. It's still pretty similar to what it was, but it is a different value. Now even though that's just a small difference, it still can cause a difference in the occurrence of signals, especially when values are crossing. Give me other so uh, that's just kind of an example there of uh, uh, the importance of using the consistent number of loaded records in the Explorer. So let's kind of go back to our points here. Okay, we're just going to kind of move on to our next uh, subject here, which is column formulas. We talked a little bit about that earlier when we were building the exploration. We'll just go ahead and take a look at those. So I'm bringing that back on the screen here. We'll, we'll just go ahead and close out this chart. I'm going to go ahead and edit the exploration. Okay, just a couple of things about column uh, column references. Um, they they make the, the 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 overwhelming advantage of column references is just that they make the programming simpler for the for creating explorations. Um, if, for instance, now we have a we have pretty small formulas in these columns. But uh, if we had a large formula in column A or column B, and we do want to filter on those, um, it saves us the work of having to reproduce that over here in the filter column. But uh, there, there's a couple of limitations with column references. Um, let's kind of go back to our points here. Okay, in the filter column, this just kind of explains what column references do. And I, they basically just take the value or the, the output of 
the column that's being referred to and they put it in the filter. So in column A, we have the value of the RSI7. In column B, excuse me, we have the buy signal of RSI7 crossing over 30. And in column B, we have the sell signal of RSI crossing below 70. Um, that's, I think that's pretty straightforward. And the syntax is just COL followed by the column letter. Now, uh, column references only take the results from the, the most recent period um, of the loaded data. So that means that they, they cannot be used in the filter calculation in any formula function that, that has a look back. So just as an example here, let me move the uh, Metastock screen back over so you can see that. And I'm going to comment out what we've done so far. And let's say that I type a moving average function in here. And then if I hit OK, the explore, the, the explore, exploration editor will not reject that. But then if we try to explore it, we won't get valid results. So we'll just take a look and see what happens here. As you can see, the Explorer is rejecting 100% of the securities. We'll just go ahead and cancel that and take a look at the report. If we look on the Rejects tab, Normal Filter Rejection. And the reason being is that the, uh, the column A value, the moving average function is trying to find 50 periods for column A, and it can't do that. It can only find one period. Okay, just uh, I'll just do a quick uh, review of these points here. Um, the the column references they just take the results from the columns that they are referring to. They make programming simpler, and the syntax is just the call C O L followed by the column letter. They only take the most recent periods results. And these are just examples of how you could use those column references in a formula. One more uh, point that uh, I'm not sure if we mentioned or not, but just want to make sure we mention is that column references can only be used in the filter column. 
you cannot use them in other columns. You can't use call A in column B and so forth. And then uh, in the Explorer, you uh, cannot use any formula that uh, refers to or that uses what we call a positive reference. And I have an example here of the, the reference function with a positive one. And the reason why is that uh, this function as written is pulling data from one period in the future. You can do that on all the data periods that are loaded until you come to the last period when there, there, there isn't any data to, to, to retrieve from one period because you're at the last one. So if we... Uh, if we were to go to the filter column here, and I'll just uh, delete that. And if I were to say reference close, comma, one, I can do this. We'll actually just go over to column A and we'll put that in column A. And we'll just go ahead and uh, run that. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and cancel the exploration and look at the report. And you'll notice that uh, in our column A on the report we have NA. It's not able to pull in a closing price from from the future because we're at the last data period. Okay, we want to kind of review the using of the uh, the alert function in the Explorer. Now the alert function checks to see if a condition has occurred within the last number of specified periods. So we'll just go ahead and go back into our exploration and we'll edit that. We'll bring Metastock over here. Take a look at that. We'll just take that out.
Now, if you remember from our initial exploration, all we got were cell signals. Um, so just to, just to demonstrate how the alert function can be used, we're going to just remove the column A reference. Excuse me. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove all of the filter formula, and then we're going to use the alert function to see if we got a, a buy signal within a certain number of periods rather than just on the last period. So I'm just going to type in the word alert. And uh, unfortunately, we can't use the, the column reference function in the alert function. So what I'm going to do is copy the formula from column A. Just highlight that and choose copy. We'll paste that in. We'll just check and see if we're getting in that uh, condition, the buy signal condition occurring within 10 periods. So I just type in the number 10 there and then I end it with a closing parenthesis. Okay, we'll go ahead and run that now. Let's see what we get. Okay, uh, we can see here that we're getting we're getting some results. Uh, we have 94% being rejected, so we'll just cancel that and uh, view the report there. Now these we didn't modify the. Uh, the column A and column B, so they still show as, as not getting a signal on the current bar, but we know from the alert function that sometime within the last 10 days there was an RSI buy signal on all of these stocks. We would need to do some additional modifications to the formula to determine what those days were, but uh, um, we know that, like I say, sometime within the last 10 periods, there was a buy signal, an RSI buy signal on these. Um, that pretty much covers what we're, what we're going to discuss today. Um, so we'll just kind of leave the last few minutes for questions. Um, we have a couple here. One is uh, from Neil Suwan. Um, I happen to know Metastock formula from David. Can I add them to the Explorer without problems? Possibly, um, as long as they don't have OPT uh, inputs from the system tester. And uh, you may need to change some of the syntax. We would need to. We would need to look at the formula to say absolutely yes or no on that. So you would want to send us an email about that. 
Um, we have a question from Alfonso. Wants to know how to remove the, 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 all the additional zeros from the, 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 the columns on the report. Unfortunately, there is not a way to do that. So we just have a couple more people that are typing questions in. Okay, uh, he's just going to email those. We have a question from YC. Can I filter C greater than ref of the close minus one? You can have that in the filter because it is looking, it is pulling data from one period back. And we just have a few more questions. Um, if you select weekly data, or excuse me, weekly interval, there isn't really any difference. Um, all of the same um, rules and parameters apply. Just that the, all the results will be based on weekly instead of daily data. That's a question from Bill. <coughs> wanted to know what happens if we select weekly interval instead of daily. A couple more coming in here. have a question from Ted. Uh, how do I select different buy and sell triggers? For example, one buy on close, two buy on price, move above yesterday's high. Um, we, are, we will be happy to answer that by email. Send that to formulas at metastock.com. And then one from Alfonso. Is there a diary of triggered alerts available? You can, you can determine the date that a triggered alert is available, that it takes some additional programming. Um, I'm not sure exactly how <clears throat> it would be presented in a diary, but uh, send us an email about that. Again, it's formulas at metastock.com. You're welcome. We have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, does anybody have any additional questions? We have a thank you from William. You're welcome. Um, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and conclude. Um, we want to thank everybody who joined us. Again, if you have questions about formulas, uh, send them to formulas at uh, metastock.com. Thank you.